Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Cooling Towers. This course will be presented in two part series. Part 1 Understand the purpose, working principle, and key performance parameters. Part 2 Design considerations, types of cooling towers, and performance analysis. Cooling towers, part 1 Understand the purpose working principle and key performance parameters. In this video, you will learn what is cooling tower and why it is important in chemical process industries. The working principle of cooling tower. Cooling tower related technical parameters. Important of these parameters in cooling tower performance. Please subscribe to the channel by subscribing you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Cooling tower is a type of heat transfer equipment where heat is rejected from water to air by direct contact. Several plants across chemical process industries use water as utility or cooling medium to cool the process fluids by exchanging sensible heat. Examples of this include reactor effluent coolers and compressor inter and after coolers, etc. In distillation columns, heat is added in the reboiler and rejected in the condenser. Many of the condensers are designed to use cooling water as a heat rejection medium. There are several other examples such as this in process industries. Why water is selected as a cooling medium? Why not some other medium like refrigerant? It is a cost factor. Water is the cheapest cooling medium available with good heat transfer capacity. It is abundantly available in several countries with moderate to good rainfall. It is inexpensive. It sounds fine. But why do you need cooling tower in chemical plant? Water picks up heat from the process fluid in heat exchangers and gets warmed up. The temperature of the water increases by 8 to 10 degrees centigrade. This increase is fixed by engineering design guidelines. Illustrated in the figure below are several heat exchangers or coolers installed in parallel arrangement in a process plant. The cooling water enters the coolers at 30 degrees centigrade and exits at 38 degrees centigrade. The exit or return water cannot be reused in the coolers as such because it is warm. There are two alternatives to make available continuous supply of water to the coolers. One, dispose of warm water returning from the coolers and admit fresh water. 2. Cool the warm water and circulate it again to the coolers. The alternative one is not only expensive but sourcing fresh water in huge quantities running into hundreds of thousands of cubic meters per hour is a challenging task. Alternative two is economically and operationally feasible solution. It is alternative two that led to the concept of cooling tower. The return water from the heat exchangers at 30 degrees centigrade is sent to the cooling tower where the water is cooled to 30 degrees centigrade by direct contact with the air. The cooled water at 30 degrees centigrade is collected at the cooling tower bottom basin and recirculated by pumps to the heat exchangers again as shown in the figure next.
cooling tower working principle. As discussed in the beginning, cooling tower is a special type of direct heat exchanger in which water and air are brought into contact with each other to reduce the water temperature. Cooling occurs by a process known as evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling tower operate on the principle that any liquid when it evaporates carries away with some quantity of heat from the bulk of the liquid of the order of latent heat of vaporization. This heat is taken from the water itself. This results in water getting cooled. In cooling tower, it is the air that is responsible for carrying the water vapor. The ambient air entering the cooling tower is unsaturated and dry. Greater the quantity of water evaporated, the cooler it becomes. To accomplish this, the flow of the medium that is air which carries away the vapor should be increased. When the air contacts the water that is sprayed, the water evaporates making the air humid. As the air moves up the tower, its humidity increases and it gets warmer. The weight ratio of water to air should be maximized to enhance the evaporation of the water and as a result, the cooling of the water. Terminologies used in cooling tower. Having understood the purpose and the principle of working of cooling tower, let us move on and take a look at some of the terminologies used in cooling tower. In cooling tower, the water is cooled to a temperature below that of the surrounding air. How does that happen? To understand that, you should be familiar with some terminologies. The three important technical parameters that you should be familiar with to understand the cooling tower performance are dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature and relative humidity. You must understand these terms before we proceed further. There are other design related parameters which are required to analyze cooling tower performance in an operating plant. They will be covered in part 2 of the cooling tower. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your spec Elon channel is one-stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career-oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now. What is dry bulb temperature? The temperature of the air is known as dry bulb temperature. Shown in the figure on the left is a liquid filled thermometer placed in the atmosphere. The level of the liquid in the thermometer bulb rises depending on the outside air temperature. The reading of the thermometer is a dry bulb temperature. What is wet bulb temperature? It is the lowest possible temperature the water can reach when air and water come into contact with each other. Shown in the figure on the right is a wet bulb temperature measurement. Suppose that a piece of cotton is wetted with water and is kept in an airstream as shown. Assume that air is warmer than water. Two forms of heat transfer takes place. Firstly, sensible heat is transferred from air to water. Secondly, a portion of the water evaporates. The latent heat of evaporation of water is taken from the water itself and thus the water cools. Within certain time, a dynamic equilibrium will be reached when the sensible heat transfer equals the latent heat transfer. The temperature reached at this condition is known as the wet bulb temperature of air. 
This is also called adiabatic saturation temperature. Wet bulb temperature is an indication of the heat content of the air. What is relative humidity? Relative humidity is the ratio of the quantity of water vapor actually present in unit volume of air to the maximum amount of water vapor the air can hold at that temperature. Relative humidity is expressed in percentage. When you say that the relative humidity of air is 100%, it means the air has reached its maximum capacity to hold water and no more water can evaporate into the air from the surrounding wet environment like water. Whether water can be cooled by contacting with surrounding air depends on the relative humidity. It is when the ROH of air is less than 100%, the water can be cooled by air by direct contact with it in an equipment such as cooling tower. At ROH is equal to 100%, the dBT and WBT of air are the same. At ROH less than 100%, the WBT will be less than the dBT because water evaporates into air and thereby losing its heat. The lower the RH, the larger will be the difference between dBT and WBT. How does this parameter impact cooling door performance? Let us move on to find out. As discussed earlier, cooling door functions to reduce the temperature of incoming cooling water by facilitating the operation of water into the air stream flowing up through the tower. The principal mode of heat transfer is evaporation of water into the air stream. Since WPT of air determines the extent of evaporation, it impacts the cooling door performance. When WPT is lower, the water exiting the cooling door will be lower. Is the wet bulb temperature constant? The wet bulb temperature of air in a particular location will remain constant for a reasonable period of time, although over the year it may vary due to seasonal factors. How close the cooling tower can cool the water to the WBT determines the efficiency of the cooling tower. Shown in the table below is a wet bulb temperature measured at five locations in a country. The WBT varies from 24 degrees centigrade at location 5 to 28 degrees centigrade at location 1. It is obvious that cooling tower designed for location 1 cannot perform at location 5. This explains the importance of understanding the DBT, WBT and ROH in the design and performance of cooling towers. The next video on cooling tower, we will focus on cooling tower design and construction features and performance analysis. Cooling tower performance related terminologies. Whereas the above three discussed parameters of the air provide the driving force for the cooling of water, the key process design parameters of cooling tower are range and approach. Range. Range is designated by the letter R. It is the difference between the temperature of the hot water entering and the temperature of the cold water leaving the cooling tower. R equal to Th minus Tc. Approach. Approach is the difference between the temperature of cold water leaving the cooling tower and the wet bulb temperature of the air approach equal to Tc minus WBT. In the analysis of cooling tower performance, these two terms will be frequently used. In the cooling tower, the minimum temperature to which the water can be cooled is a wet bulb temperature. L by G ratio it is a ratio of 
the MOS of water flow to the MOS of air flow to the cooling tower. As explained before, the performance of the cooling tower gets impacted by seasonal factors. Since the cooling tower is designed for specific wet bulb temperature, the changes in temperature from design conditions will affect the cooling tower performance. The user has to regulate the water flow rate or air flow rate to achieve the required cold water temperature. There are ways to regulate the flow rates of both air and water to CT. This will be covered in the part 2 of the subject. How does cooling tower performance affect the process plant? Cooling tower is not part of the process design package. That is to say, it is not included in the main process plant equipment. It is a standalone equipment package and falls under utility system. It is designed and supplied by cooling tower manufacturer. It receives the warm water cools and returns the cold water at a design temperature. It is at this temperature the process plant equipment and other utilities such as air compressors, refrigeration systems are designed to perform. Every 1 degree increase in cold water temperature will have significant impact on several heat exchangers like condensers in the process plant and refrigeration system. This emphasizes the importance of the design and selection of cooling tower. Learn more on this in the part 2. Do not miss it. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this, we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.